So you're applying to medical school, graduate school, whatever school in a couple of years, and you want to get some research experience under your belt. So how do you do that? So welcome back to the channel, everyone. Don't worry, you came to the right place. And I'm going to walk you through how to get a research position from how to apply to a research position, different places you could go to. And if you stick to the end of the video, I'm going to teach you a way, like a bonus tip to get research positions a hundred times easier than what you've been doing right now. So stick to the end and let's get right into it. All right, so why do research? First of all, academia has become really, really competitive as of recent. So you don't always need research, and especially back before, like a couple of years ago, maybe a decade ago, you didn't need research to apply to, say, medical schools and really competitive graduate programs. But that has changed. Everyone's getting super competitive, so it's a way to make you stand out from the rest of the applicant pool. And this is especially true if you're applying to top schools in your state, in your country, or if you're trying to go overseas for your studies, like go to some other country you're gonna be applying against some really top applicants and you're gonna to wanna to make yourself stand out and research is a great way to do that. So the first thing to consider when you wanna pursue research is to think about what you want the outcome of your research to be. Are you trying to get your name on a paper? Are you trying to get your name on a poster presentation? Maybe a conference presentation? Obviously, a lot of times you wanna get published in general, so all three of those could be good for you. But the thing is that when you want to get a paper published, you got to keep that in mind when you're searching for research opportunities because it can change between one opportunity and another. Now, once you know what you want to be the outcome of your research, you got to start thinking about what kind of research you want to do. And you got to also think about the publishability of the kind of research you want to do. For example, if you want to do, say, medical AI research, so artificial intelligence and medicine, you got to think about how publishable that kind of research is. For example, one way that people applying to medical school categorize research is wet lab research versus non-wet lab research. So wet lab research is when you have your coat on, you have your goggles on, and you're in the lab doing like pipette stuff on like cells, you're working with real animals. This kind of research can be super interesting, but the issue with that is it takes a lot of time between when you start doing the research to when you get the results to when you get the paper published. So it might be that the paper is only published like years after you apply to medical school and that might not be something that you want. However, certain types of research like performing statistical analyses on medical data or performing literature review, which is when you read the latest scientific uh, papers on a certain subject and report your findings to your professor, these kind of research projects take often much shorter time frames to complete and you can have your name on a paper or a publication of some sort by the time you apply to medical school. All right, so now you know what you want out of your research, which is super important. The next thing to do is find research opportunities, and I'm gonna list them from the hardest way to get research opportunities to the easiest way. The first one is online applications, the second one is emailing professors straight up, and the third one is courses at your university that offer research. So let's start with the first. The first one, online applications. You can often look up the name of your university or the name of like neighboring colleges, and look up the word SERP after, S-U-R-P, which stands for Summer Undergraduate Research Program. And you'll often find links that you can apply to, uh, and it'll be like a whole research award that you can apply to in order to perform research at a certain department in that university. These programs are treated as awards, so it's gonna be really huge if you can get one of them for your application. Not only that, but you're often getting paid, so the website will often list the stipend or like how much money you're getting for that entire duration of like 10 to 16 weeks that you're working there. Um, the, the website will also list, and it's really great, it will list the outcome of your research project as well, which is often like a poster presentation uh, with these sort of programs. So from the get-go, you know that, hey, you're getting paid, it's going to be an award you put on your resume, and you're going to get a publication out of it. So honestly, it's the best kind of deal that you can get for yourself. The downside of these is how competitive it is to get these kind of awards. So people applying will often have like, one or two research positions under their belt before even applying to these undergraduate research awards. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, often the website will list like professors that you can get matched to if you were to like um, get accepted into the award. And what you can do is actually email those professors um, that you're interested in working with before applying and saying, hey, you know, I'm interested in applying to you. I just want to let you know. Uh, do you know if I can like learn a skill or two to make myself more competitive? Things like this will never hurt your application and it can actually be the difference between getting that research award, getting in with that professor and not. Now the second way to obtain research is to email principal investigators, professors, researchers. I'm just going to use the word PI now. You can just email them up front. The way I would do this is to go on your university's webpage, go on the faculty or department that you want to work on, say like the department of chemistry, 
and go see the staff directory. Now in the staff directory, it'll list all the people in that department and it'll say like the primary research um, interests and then you can click on them and read more about them. So you can also do this with other neighboring colleges in your hometown as well. Once you find a researcher that you're interested in, what you're gonna do is go look up their name on Google, see some articles that they publish, see if they're a part of any podcasts, any interviews, uh, if they've been mentioned in the news or something, and then you're gonna make an email to them and the subject is gonna be something like, you know, chemistry student from XYZ University, really interested in your work on this, or something else that's related to what you read about them on uh, online during your search. And then in the body of your email, you're gonna mention some more information about yourself. So if you've taken courses relevant to the research work, this is the time to mention it. If you have like awards that you've won or, you know, just cool things about yourself, like a small sentence or two, you can mention that kind of stuff just to introduce yourself. And then you're gonna ask the professor, hey, you know, I'm really interested in your work on XYZ, I've read this and this, do you have 15 minutes to spare in the next couple of weeks to talk about ways that I can contribute to your lab uh, during the summer or during the semester or anything like that. Even better is if you can use the phrase volunteer at your lab in your email because it's hard to turn down free work and even if like the head PI doesn't need your help, there's probably like a PhD student or a postdoc in the lab somewhere that could use an extra hand during the summer or over the, over the course of the semester. Now I should also mention that you can't really be expected to be paid if you're going to be emailing professors like this because often the very first research experience that you do is something that you do for free just to get that first experience. Um, and also when you're emailing them, I would email like two or three professors because odds are not everyone's going to get back to you. And if those two or three don't respond, after a week, send them a follow-up email and then you can maybe email some more after that if they're not responding because professors are busy and obviously you don't have too much experience under your belt. So, you know, keep at it and keep emailing and following up until you get your answer. The last way to obtain research experience is to see if your university offers any courses that have a research component to them. So I can't really tell you much about this, but this is something you can talk to your academic advisor about and they'll be happy to help you. Now that you've booked your interview with the professor, it's time to ask some really critical questions. So obviously during your interview, make sure you dress well, make sure that you have, you're have using your best manners, um, ask them about you know what the research project is about, tell them about why you're interested in their work, what you bring to the table in terms of maybe time, maybe in terms of skills that you have, so mention all of that. But one of the main things that you need to talk about is if you can expect a publication and by when. So ask them about what kind of publication could I be looking at, you know, I'm looking to be published. Make sure that you say that and then say, you know, ask them about the timeline of the project. So this strikes a lot of undergraduate students as like a really intimidating thing to ask. They think they're being rude. Trust me, it's not rude at all. PIs are, are really like expecting this. They know why you're there. They, they know that you're there to learn, to contribute your skills and to get your name published somewhere to help you with your future career. They know this and they are 100% comfortable with it. Honestly, if you have a professor that's like uncomfortable with that question, then I would kind of reconsider working with them because this is a super standard thing to ask and it's 100% you know, normal that you, that you want to get this out of your research experience. And I really want to stress this because I had a friend who did research for a whole summer and was not able to get published and this friend was just super disappointed because uh, he or she, I'm not going to say what, but didn't have these kind of conversations before starting uh, their research. All right, so hopefully when you made it this far, now you got your research project, you know when you're starting and you know what you're doing. So now is the time to prepare. So one way that now that you have your project, you can even stand out more to your professor is to ask them, hey, is there anything that I can do to prepare for this? Is there any, are there any software tools I can learn? Programming languages that I can kind of get started on? Or, you know, are there any mini courses online that you recommend, any video series, documentaries that, you know, you know, whatever, anything that you recommend that I work on before starting with your lab. This is going to help you perform better, contribute better, and, you know, your PI is going to see you in a better light, and obviously this is the same person that's going to be writing you a recommendation letter down the line, and you might even want to work with them even past the duration of your research uh, project. And that's the main gist of it, everyone. So thanks for watching. Now's the time for the bonus tip. So the bonus tip is to see what research you can do in a remote setting. The thing is, with things like literature review, with statistical analyses, with um, you know data entry, with things that require maybe some coding, some software utilization, you can do this in the remote setting. And when you do things in the remote setting, that opens you up beyond like your home university, beyond your 
neighboring universities. Now you can do research with any university in your state, in your country, even across borders. So I know friends that have been doing research with, you know, uh, labs that are not even in, the, in their country because they're doing some computational kind of work, some software, some data entry kind of work, and they're able to have access to not only like the dozens of opportunities around them, but thousands in their country and then tens of thousands around the world. So make sure that you keep this in mind. This can be the difference between finding a research position and not. The only tricky thing is you might not be getting paid if you're doing research in like another country because of work visa issues, but that's about it. Honestly, for your first research experience, this is a great way to make sure that you get that research experience on time. So thanks everybody for sticking to the end. If you have any questions, just shoot me a DM on Instagram. Uh, leave a like on this video, comment what you think I should talk about next, make sure to subscribe, and that's about it. So good luck on your applications, and I'll see you next time.